Hello, hello, Blissful Parents. Michelle Abraham, your host here today. I am excited to bring you someone I've gotten to know over the last little while. She is fabulous. She's heart-centered and she just absolutely is so passionate about the support she gives parents. Let me please introduce you to Michelle Benio. And Michelle, hi, how are you? Hi, Michelle. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for inviting me. You're welcome. We have a Michelle times two today for you guys. <laughs> You're in treat to Michelle's. Um, let me tell you a little bit more about Michelle Benio, everyone. Uh, Michelle is a certified grief recovery specialist, um, early childhood parent coach, and the founder of Good Grief Parenting. Um, after her six-year-old son died of cancer, her three-year-old daughter said, mommy, half of me is gone. A oh, heartbreaking statement. Focus Michelle's career in early as an early childhood parenting specialist on the impact of grief on young children, particularly after child loss. Michelle equips parents and other caring adults to recognize young children's grief um, and to provide the support children need to build resilience and cope with any loss. The desire of Michelle's heart is to see families live forward after loss for the future bright with possibilities and even joy. As I told you, Michelle's, Michelle's passionate about this subject and mm -hmm. she's got a story that's incredible and a heart that's here to share with you guys how you can support your kids too. So Michelle, welcome and thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you, Michelle. So Michelle, let's dive in first with, you know, we were just discussing a little bit about how we've had a lot of experts on here talking about children's behavior and, and, mm -hmm. and, and the, the ways that it presents itself. Um, and it was interesting. You just said something about how grief presents as sometimes as behavior that's not actually behavior, but it's grief. So can you just, let's just start off right there. And I think we mm -hmm. can take our conversation from there. Yeah. I, yes, I enjoyed listening to some of your previous guests. And, you know, it just really, um, when we talk about raising young children, because my focus is on that early childhood age, birth to age, or possibly 10, there's so much that we as parents are, are dealing with around their um, lack of skills in regulating their behavior and also communication skills and even just cognitively understanding these feelings that they have when they've experienced a huge loss event and are experiencing grief. So there's so much in that, you know, young children grieve just like adults do. I mean, my, my daughter was such a case study for me. Um, you know, I was already a parent, early childhood parent educator but I hadn't really thought a lot about that it, grieving at that age. And so when she said, mommy, half of me is gone, it just really focused my attention there. And I had already been working with um, parents on kids' behavior. And that was what so many parents wanted to know is how do I help my child manage their behavior? The thing about grief is that when that's a factor in what the parent-child relationship is experiencing, parents don't know how to do it either. They have so many questions about grief. I didn't know anything about grief. I hadn't had an experience before I had to do this with my daughter. So first and foremost, um, you know, we can't really help our kids regulate or deal with something that we ourselves don't necessarily understand. So that's one thing that makes coping with grief in young children so hard. And the other thing is that we are focused on managing behavior. And we always, if we know our child's experiencing grief, like my daughter, then I still have to do the job of helping her learn emotion and behavior management skills. And I'm con I was constantly trying to figure out, is this grief that's causing this or is this misbehavior or is this, what is this? And so the message that I give parents is that it really doesn't matter what the source of the behavior is. This child has emotions and feelings that they don't understand and don't know how to manage. And I loved what, um, what 
Devin was saying, your guest Devin was talking about, and, and Catherine was the other one I listened to, who were both talking about behaviors and the idea that um, we sometimes muscle our way with kids when they're misbehaving. And, and really what I found to be magical is the approach of saying to this child, I can tell you've got big feelings right now and they don't feel very good, do they? And with, in the case of grief, we have those big feelings too. And it's important to let children know that what they're feeling is normal. Mom feels it too. And we're going to deal with this together and not be heavy handed about it. Um, so yes, yeah, so that that is a thing that uh, when we're dealing with kids in grief, a lot of times they're behaving in ways we don't understand because we don't know whether they're grieving, but we can be pretty sure that is what is happening or at least part of what's happening in that situation. Yeah, wow. I, mean, I remember Catherine saying like, you got to get in the rowboat, row up to them with the hot chocolate and a blanket. Yes. Like, okay. <laughs> yes. Let's deal with this. Mm -hmm. And I can't imagine how, how difficult it must be to parent when you're also grieving too. And it's like, it's kind of this, like, who do you do take care of yourself first and then the child, or you put the oxygen mask on yourself first. And then like, mm -hmm. so how in that situation do you choose between how you, it's, it's gotta be a cha challenging, challenging situation. Yes. Well, it's challenging on so many levels because under the best of circumstances as human beings, as, as moms or dads, the two hardest things we will ever do in our life are parent a child under the best of circumstances. That's one of the hardest jobs we'll ever have or grieve the loss of someone we love who died. And when you've got to do both of those at the same time, it's almost incomprehensible. And then as parents, we, you know, we just really don't know how to manage it. So, and you ask the question, and it is such a good question um, about what, which one do we do first? You really do need to put your oxygen mask on first. You really do need to take care of yourself. This young child needs so much of you and you can't ignore that. You can't put them aside and make them wait, but you also can't do that with yourself. And so, you know, the other thing I share with parents about grief is first of all, you're taking care of yourself and figuring out what your self-care would look like because when you're grieving, self-care isn't a bubble bath. I mean, a bubble bath might be part of it, but the bubble bath isn't going to take away the stress of grief. It's still going to be there while you're in the bubble bath. So you need to figure out what you really do need and, um, and really think deeply about the needs in your deepest being that need to be um, bolstered at this time of grief. And then the other thing is, not being afraid to go through the grief with your child. It's not an either or situation. Your child's grieving, you're grieving. So yeah, you take their hand and you say, we are going to get through this. This is so hard. Our family is, is you know, we miss this person so much. The child's feeling a lot of insecurity. They see mom and dad, you know, behaving in ways that can feel kind of scary to them. Can this person take care of me? So many of us grew up with parents who just pushed the loss of someone aside and never talked about it. And that's really one of the um, least helpful things you can do for a child because they still know you're dealing with it, whether you're talking with them or not. So Make sure you're taking care of yourself, figuring out the things you really need, including maybe getting support from someone who can take your child for a day while you do something for yourself or whatever it may look like. And then when you're with your family, you are all in this together and you mention your loved one's name. You express that you miss them. You talk to your child about, you know, what do you miss the most about David? You know, I used to hear my daughter playing by herself and singing, oh, how I wish my brother was here, you know, so talking to her about, 
you know, I, I hear you singing that song. What are you missing most about David right now? We're afraid to do that with kids, but they need for us to do that. Otherwise, this loss becomes an elephant in the room. Wow. So powerful. Yeah. There's so many things going on. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, there's all sorts of different losses of different kinds of people in your family or different ways. So is it different depending on if it's like a family member, like a sibling for the child or like another adult, like a grandparent or Mm -hmm. an aunt and uncle or something? Mm -hmm. You know, it is different when it's a sibling. That's a a huge topic. That's why that's who I work with, because um, children are overlooked as grievers, no matter what the loss is. And there are many kinds of losses that children need our help with. When it's a sibling, there is a connection, there is a bond that begins the moment a person becomes a sibling, and it doesn't go away. Even, for example, if an expected child is stillborn, um, that child who knew they were going to be a big brother or big sister will still carry that bond forward, that connection forward. That's part of what I really want to help parents understand. But the question you're asking, I think, is, you know, kids need support no matter what the loss. It depends on how close they were to the person. And they could be very close to a grandparent. They could be very close and just love the family dog. They could even love their goldfish, you know. Um, like kids talk about there is a few years. Yes, <laughs> yes. And so another part of children's grief is recognizing that we can't Uh, You know, when I um, got certified by the Grief Recovery Institute, one of the most valuable things they remind us is that every grief is 100%. We tend to compare grief. You know, mine is my loss is worse than yours because, um, you know, losing a sibling is worse than losing a goldfish. I mean, I'd have to say yes, but the child can still have very real grief that a parent needs to help them with around a goldfish because grief is just a response to loss of something important uh, of any kind. And if we can help kids deal with those losses in helpful grief honoring ways when they're little and when they're young, we're going to build their resilience for bigger losses that they're going to experience. So whether it's a goldfish, whether it's grandpa, a beloved dog, whether it's moving away and no longer being with your favorite preschool teacher that you really miss, you know, all the things that kids are experiencing through the pandemic where they're away from people and not being able to be around them, this is very real grief. And so the conversations and just raising awareness that you recognize how this is affecting the child is so important. You can't heal the grief, you can't make it go away. You know, a lot of times we wanna make kids feel better. That's not really the point. We can't make them feel better. We maybe can distract them a bit. But the point really is to honor the fact that it it makes sense that they have uncomfortable, not good feelings around what happened and that and to assure them that we're here for them. We understand how they're feeling and we're going to help them get through it. Mm, that's great. And I'm sure mm-hmm. like some of the tools that you're teaching them then are going to be really beneficial for later on in life. Too. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I really see it as raising children, teaching children to grow up, to be adults who know how to have conversations around grief, because we all know that many, many people don't. We're, um, you know, grief kind of freaks a lot of people out. They, If they know someone who's had a loss, they're not sure what to do. We're always worried about doing the wrong thing. The right thing is simply to be there for this person 
not try to say the right thing because you can't and not try to do the right thing because you can't, but just be sensitive to what they need. And if we can model that for children, they'll grow up. You know, this is it, it can be life changing to give kids these skills so that they can grow up not only to deal with their own losses, but also to be there for other people who need someone to be there in their grief. Mm, that's great advice. Mm-hmm. Now we were, the topic of today's conversation is the four ways adults can support children yes. in their grief. And we may have touched on some of these already. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> yes. We haven't touched on yet, Michelle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I forgot we were going to talk about four specific ones. So first of all, um, and some of them have been touched upon. First of all, um, we need to be honest with kids. So when someone dies, we tell them this person died. That can be the hardest thing for adults. For me to say my son died, I choked on those words. I didn't want to describe that. But to kids, that's just another vocabulary word that they need to learn, like so many other vocabulary words we give them. It's the adult that has trouble with it, not the child. So start out by giving them the accurate word because passed away, went away, those other things we say are very vague and leave the child with a lot of questions. Even though they don't understand death, we can tell them the person's body stopped working and they can't do any of the things they used to be able to do. And, you know, we can't talk with them or play with them anymore and they can't feel anything anymore. And just as they grow, they'll grow into the understanding of death. So the first thing is honesty. Um, And we don't need to give them a lot of information because They don't need a lot. Let them ask questions and then answer their questions. Um, But the second point is to allow space for conversation and invite it, which, you know, I touched upon a little bit earlier when, you know, when you're aware that they're feeling something or they say something, ask them, invite them to say more, ask them, you know, how are you feeling about this? I'm really missing David today. Are you missing David today? How are you feeling about that today? Just inviting conversation. It doesn't matter if they have a lot to say or not. Again, you're developing a pattern for this child to know that you want to hear from them when they have something to say. And they, when they do have something to say, they'll know that you want to listen to them. So, you know, I meet so many adults now that I'm doing this work who said, I wish you'd been there when my sibling died because my parents never talked about it. We, you know, we never said my sibling's name. I grew up, you know, never having any help or support with this. And so opening up conversation, not being um, afraid of it is uh, really important. The third really thing, point. I'm sure like a lot of people yeah. back in the generations used to just, you know, push it down push it away, move on. Yeah. <laughs> but it don't bring it up. It never happens. Exactly. Yeah, that's so sad. Yeah. We do it because we're not comfortable with it because we didn't learn, you know, we didn't grow up with uh, adults who made us comfortable. And then the other part of it is we don't think young children should be exposed to this. We don't want them to have this. You know, my daughter was three and a half. I didn't want this to be part of her life, but it was whether I wanted it to be or not. So Um, not talking to them about it leaves them alone with it Mm. because they are experiencing it and they're alone with it and they're confused and they don't have the answers they need. So, yes. The third point is also something that, you know, I've learned. My son actually died 21 years ago. So I've been in this grief space, finding everything that I could about healthy grieving uh, for myself as well as for children. And um, one thing I want to say whenever I get a chance is that the five stages of grief are not those five stages of Elizabeth Kubler Ross's stages were actually for someone who got a a terminal diagnosis that they themselves were going to die. It was never intended to be 
um, stages for people who have lost a loved one and are going through grief. And when I started to grieve, I didn't do those five stages. And I thought, what's wrong with me? Um, So there are other ways to look at grief, um, which I won't talk about here. uh, But one thing that I came upon was an idea about grief that that kind of developed in the 1980s um, or 90s called continuing bonds. And that's the idea that um, it's healthy and helpful for grief when we remember our loved one, because that's another thing that uh, many of us as grievers hear from well-meaning people is you've got to move on. You mean you're still keeping all of his toys? You know, you got to get rid of those. You're obsessing. That's not healthy. It is healthy. It's a way for us to carry this relationship forward because death ends a life but it doesn't end a relationship. And so I, you know, we find that grievers can, can live forward, which is the term I use so much more easily, not easily, but more easily when they're able to just find ways to remember their loved one. And for a bereaved sibling, that's particularly important because of the connection that they have. So um, honoring those continuing bonds and finding ways to keep that loved one present is the fourth key. And the, the last one is also one that I've touched on. And it's simply honoring whatever kind of grief your child experiences, you know, when they run home with their something clutched in their hand, they found this caterpillar, they run home to show you and they open their hand and it's squished and it's no longer alive. You know, you don't brush it off and and say, oh, it's just a bug. You know, you honor their horror and their grief that they have this beautiful, fuzzy living caterpillar and now it's dead we honor that even though when they're adults that won't be grief it's very real grief for them now and as i said you know earlier we want to help to help them um, you know work through grief even when it's these little things so those are really the four keys Um, And with parents, of course, the self-care is the other one. That's usually the first one I share with a parent is to take care of yourself first. So, yeah. Those are great. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. Those are really, those are really helpful. I think for parents, because, you know, we grew up not really like talking about grief a lot. And so Mm -hmm. it's like a whole learning process for everyone and the parents included, um, so those are some really great, great points for us to remember. And I, I love the honoring of the bonds. I think that sounds mm-hmm. great. You can continue mm-hmm. that conversation about them um, and, and continue on. You know, it's interesting. I had um, a, one of my best friends was uh, killed by a train when I was backpacking through Europe mm-hmm. when, at 19. I was a little bit older than a young child, but mm-hmm. that being able to talk about her and honor her took many years to be able to do that. But because I did do that, shove it down, don't talk about yes. it. <laughs> and, and, but now like talking about her all the time is, you know, a lot more healing and a lot yes. feels a lot better. You feel like you're honoring her more than just like forgetting about it as something horrific that happened several years ago, right? Right, right. And that becomes a part of who we are, whether we like it or not. You know, as a bereaved parent, you'll never be the same parent ever again. You'll parent your living child differently and you'll be different. And we really, we grieve that too. But there are good things in this that you can take from it. And, you know, when a 19 year old loses a very good friend, I mean, you know, your future won't ever be the same, but it can still be very good for sure yeah yeah and I think taking those lessons that was a good lesson learning like you know life is short Mm -hmm. you don't know how long you do have so you know making the most of it and um I love I love that your whole purpose here Michelle is to like find joy and even joy is a possibility Mm -hmm. again Mm -hmm. for parents and and their siblings and families that are going through grief so I think that's a really a really key important I love the uh, how you put it the the life forward mm-hmm. um so that life doesn't stop it moves forward mm-hmm. um I think that's an important piece too because I think 
feels like probably a lot uh it like stops in time stops and right that moment mm-hmm. 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 and it away. takes time I uh, yeah excuse me it takes time to heal the other thing I want to say is you know you just grieve in your own way that was the other thing I learned there isn't a certain way mm-hmm. and you also can't expect to be past your grief at any point you never will be but it will get better and grief and joy can coexist it's not a matter of getting rid of grief so you can be happy again you can do both at the same time Mm, that's a great Mm -hmm. point they could coexist yes tell us a little bit about good grief parenting so how are you helping supporting parents what's available to them and i know you have some facebook groups and stuff so let's chat about yes Yes, I actually have a webinar uh, next Friday that is it's similar to information to what I just shared. Um, And I also will have an opportunity for people to hop on a call with me. And that's always an option. My main program is see your way forward after child loss. It's a seven week um, program, and I'm going to be running that again in April. And I can work also individually with parents. So I do uh, individual and group coaching. My Facebook group is unique because it is families wanting to live forward and really get, uh, you know, support each other. What we don't have, what I didn't have 21 years ago was that community of other parents who understand, you know, I've got this young child, their whole life is ahead of them. Now, what do I do? So the community is really what I want to provide. Um, Everything is available through my website, which is goodgriefparenting.com. I have a community page with, you know, all of the ways that people can connect. I also have a good grief guide right there on the front page of my website, goodgriefparenting.com, that outlines some of the things I talked about today, including some real specific ways of how to have better conversations with young children about loss. So, yeah. So great resources. So blissful parents, make sure you go and check out Michelle's page. This seems like it's hit home for you. You need some support. You want to be a part of a community. I love the idea of having a community supporting of other parents that understand yeah. what's happening. I think that's so, so crucial uh, for this, you know, for parents uh, grieving um, and to support the siblings too. And, um, love what you're up to, Michelle. I think it's such important work in this world. Um, and want to thank you for spending your time with us. Any last words you want to give our parents before we let you go today? The main, the main word that I hope you heard is that it is, it, it is simple, not easy, but simple to give your child what they need when they're grieving loss of any kind. It's just be, you know, being available and inviting them to conversation and being sensitive to what they're feeling and being, being present with them. If we can do that, instead of trying to fix grief and loss, you are miles ahead of you know, the kind of upbringing many of us had, and you're really helping your child to experience what I call good grief. That's why I call my business good grief parenting, because grief can be good when it's done in a helpful way. So don't be afraid to talk to your child about losses. Mm, that's mm-hmm. so great, Michelle. And I was wondering where that name came from. So now, yes. now, mm-hmm. now I understand good grief parenting. That's mm-hmm. great. Love it. So blissful parents, again, it's goodgriefparenting.com. And you can find Michelle's gift. There is a free downloadable as well. And also go check out the Facebook groups. We'll put those links in the show notes. And again, Michelle, thank you so much for joining us today on blissful parenting. Blissful parents, please go out there and have a blissful week. We'll see you again next week. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you.